Loretta Sanchez is with us. Her election to Congress back in 1996 made her the first American of Mexican heritage ever to represent Orange County in Congress. It was a shocker when that happened back then. <laughs> she serves on the House Armed Services Committee and the Committee on Homeland Security. Now she's running for the U.S. Senate, seat currently held by Barbara Boxer, who of course has announced she's retiring. Congresswoman, good to see you this morning. Good, good morning. morning. Thank you and good morning to all. You know, I want, let me bring up a kind of sensitive thing. Sure. With you. When you run for office, it's like the presidential election where personalities are everything. With you, people tend to judge you by your personality rather by issues. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Well, you know that if you look at the work that I do in the House, uh, it's all about national security, international security, counterterrorism, and that's why the majority of the people who serve in the House with me from California, the Democrats, have actually endorsed my campaign. They're actually the ones who asked me to run for the Senate. So. I can be fun, you guys can be fun, but the issues that you treat are very serious issues. Well said. Uh, the issues that you get involved in are the issues of the world right now. That's right. Issues like, should we commit too many troops or enough, not enough troops? What should we do about ISIS, et cetera? Let's go back to Iraq, where a lot of this began. You voted against Iraq at a time when it was very unpopular uh, to vote against the invasion. That's true, you know, uh, and being from Orange County, which has an incredible history of our Marines, yeah. of El Toro, many veterans, but you know, it was actually the veterans who came to me and they said, Loretta, we've seen war, we've seen war and we know what it does and this is not reason enough to send our sons and daughters over there. And I took that really to heart and you know, just a week ago, my youngest son was commissioned as an officer in the United States Army. My husband is a retired colonel from the U.S. Army Infantry. We're a family that serves this country. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at why we should go to war, I have to really think about, can I tell a mom that I had no other choice, that that was what I needed to do in order to in order to ensure the safety of America and Americans. If I can't do that, then I'm going to say no. And I, that's exactly my thought process as I looked at all the information way back in 2002. It sounds like it's something you don't regret. I is don't that, regret it at all. Well, I, at, at this point, it's easy not mm -hmm. to regret it. Back then, it was so there, difficult there were to Democrats, take that and you know this, who were opposed to it, but didn't have the political courage to take mm -hmm. that stand. That's right. And I, and there were so many, you, you cannot understand the pressures of those significant votes. And none of the candidates in this U.S. Senate race have had those pressures. And, and, and I said no. And I came back to Orange County, I was spit on. Um, they put bodyguards on me because I had so many death threats on me. And then a few years later, people would stop me in the street and say, how did you know? Hmm. Well, you never know. In fact, mm -hmm. when I took that vote, I, I was hoping that I was wrong, right? Because why would a president in a country send troops in and put our people in harm's way? But Iraq, I think, led to the rise of ISIS. We spent almost $2 trillion of our money that we could otherwise have invested in ourselves, in our education, in our infrastructure. So, excuse me for a minute, what do you say to Hillary Clinton? Who voted for that war? Yeah, she knows that I... That, that I believe that we shouldn't have gone there, and, and, and she knows that. We've had that discussion. And there are so many of my colleagues that voted for that war that tell me, and have told me, if I could take one vote back in 20 years, it would be that one. But I'll tell you, there are other votes that I've taken that have not made me popular at the time. I said no. The Wall Street bailout? Uh, yeah, the Wall Street bailout. And remember what happened with the Wall Street, the Wall Street bailout. Yeah. Again, the pressures that are on you. So it didn't pass on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We actually took two votes. People forget this. Mm -hmm. It didn't pass on Tuesday. And then the Democrats had to change votes in order to pass it on Friday morning. Do you get a call from the president saying, come on, back oh, me up on this? Oh, oh. Calls from everybody, pressure from everybody. They even turn the donors of your campaigns on. You cannot Im imagine the pressures that mm -hmm. happen in those votes. But remember also what happened during that time. So we voted no on Tuesday. 
and the vote changed to yes on Friday. And that was the same bill. So they actually twisted arms and changed people. What happened in between there? My own family crisis. My brother went out to sea to go to Buccaneer Days at, at uh, Catalina Island, and he was hit oh. by a barge oh, no. um, and ended up at the bottom of the sea. And we didn't know. That happened on a Wednesday. So my brother was missing. We were, you know, everybody was lo And I said to my sister, who's also a congresswoman, we stay here. We stay here because America needs us to take the right vote. Wow. And you don't dare change your vote. Right. We are a no on this. That's what's difficult about your campaign right now is you're very busy doing your day job and then also campaigning on weekends and things. So there's things that obviously you can't get to. For example, yesterday um, you missed the United Farm Workers Convention. So there was an article in the paper today about that. Right. People, people always talk about what you don't make or what you didn't do. They have to realize, I have to honor my commitment in the job that I have, and it's incredibly important to try to make as many votes as possible. Family is also very important to me. My job is very important to me. I think that I am the most experienced, most ready to go, the person who has actually taken the tough votes, not like others who, you know. Well, let's talk about <laughs> the race. Trying to figure out what's let's going on. Let's talk about the race. I, you know, before we do that, I want to run a little clip here okay. with, with Larry King. This comes up for you all the sure, time. Sure, yeah. We'll watch this. I uh, want to see if you want to take this back, okay? We know that there is a, a small group, and we don't know how big that is. It can be anywhere between 5 and 20 percent from the people that I speak to that um, Islam is their religion and who have a, a desire um, for a caliphate and to, to uh, institute that in any way possible. Are you saying that's here in the United States? No, he no, no, no. In that was Muslim, so that's okay. worldwide. So you got a lot of flack for that. Mm -hmm. Do you stand by the statement? Absolutely. Remember that I've got 20 years of sitting on the Armed Services Committee. Um, ever since 9-11, when we started the Homeland Security Committee, I was put on by the leadership to look at California and ensure we protect California with respect to counterterrorism. I'm in top secret meetings all the time. I mean, that's what I spend my time in Washington, D.C. doing. Should the president call it radical Islamic terrorism? Well, you know, I can't get into the president's head. What do you head. call it? What do you call it? I call it people who mean to do us harm. You don't call it radical Islamic terrorism? Uh, they, they certainly, nobody can say that somebody who joins ISIS is not radical. Mm -hmm. And they are using Islam in a negative way. They're using that religion to hide behind to do us harm. And they certainly are radicalizing. I mean, San Bernardino so you, is a radicalization. So when you put those things together, isn't that what you get? Well, radical it is, it Islamic is, and terrorism? And it is individual. And it's not... It, it, you know, I, I truly believe, and believe me, I'm probably the only member of Congress who has lived any significant time in a Muslim country. I used to live in Egypt when I was younger. Mm. And I also saw the change happen there. I saw the rise of the Islamic Brotherhood at the time, the assassination of Sadat. So I see what happens when we don't fully understand what is happening in the world with respect to people who use Islam in a negative way. We just had the, the head of Indonesia come out, a, a Muslim country, lo, country with the largest, the largest amount of population, Muslims, population, yes. right, mm -hmm. coming out and said, we have a problem with people who use Islam it, to further terrorism and extremist ways, and we need to start addressing that. So. Before we run out of time, let's talk about the race. It is such an important race. We haven't had a vacancy since 1992. Uh, top challenger Kamala Harris, you and her going up against one another. Many say it'll be a co competition yes. between the North and the South because she was a former DA in San Francisco. And, and so keep in mind, keep in mind, she in has this, an edge in a way. In this primary, the top two, no matter what the votes right. are. They will, they will square off in November. Exactly. You seem to be positioned to be number two. Yeah. There are three Republicans behind you. But I would like to add that although there are fewer voters up in the Bay Area, they do tend to vote so in a much prime, more. Yes, you're so right. what, what, what do you think? So of in a primary, it tends to favor a, a northerner, the San Franciscan. That's why we see Jerry Brown, Gavin Newsom, Betty Yee, the two senators are from San Francisco. I mean, everything you see, because they know what's at stake. They gang up together and they say, this is our candidate and here's who we're going to push through. 
And Los Angeles and the southern part of the country of the state, it's a little bit more. We're a little bit easier. <laughs> Things are going on in June. It's Kids are graduating. We're at the beach. We're taking vacations. But in November, that's in a presidential election, that's when we show up to vote. Mm -hmm. So what helps us is that we don't have to be number one. We can be number two on the 7th of June. But I need Los Angeles to come right. and vote for us. And you know, in November, we believe when you look at the differences between the rest of the candidates and myself, nobody has the legislative federal experience. Nobody's met with the world leaders, dealt with these issues of counterterrorism, national security. They don't know. You, you know, my colleagues from the House said, we want Loretta because she actually knows how to work with people. You know, she knows how to move people. She knows how to get things passed. None of the other people have that experience. And that's incredibly important. When we choose for the first time in 24 years, our next U.S. Senator. Well, thank you for using this for your closing statement of the debate. <laughs> we appreciate it. Thanks, Loretta. Good to see you. Thank you. Yeah. All right.